In thermodynamics, we're going to explore how an external energy source can change the internal energy of a system. Now, what is internal energy? You will find the definition to be uh, online that it generally says that it is basically the total sum of kinetic energies and potential energies in a system. Now, what do we mean by those two terms? So, internal energy represented as sum of kinetic energies plus potential energies of the molecules or the atoms of the system. Now, in the definition, you will sometimes see they talk about the kinetic energy, but in specific definitions, they say it's random kinetic energy and the potential energies. Now, we know that the potential energy in chemistry or in physics, uh, they are different. In physics, we generally talk about potential energy because of the distance from the surface of the Earth. That is gravitational potential energy. Sometimes we talk about the chemical potential energy between the bonds. Sometimes we talk about the elastic potential energy due to the change of shape of an object. Uh, and we do that in AS as half kx square, right? So what would be the meaning of potential energy in this case? So basically they are going to talk about the number of bonds or the strength of bonds uh, under these circumstances. And the random distribution of kinetic energy is basically the kinetic energy of the atoms and not of the whole system if it is moving. So for example, if we had an object, let's say we talk about a tennis ball or a solid sphere of metal, let's say. So most definitely it is made out of many atoms, many small atoms of the metal itself. Now if the ball is stationary, uh, specifically, strictly speaking, the kinetic energy is zero because due to half mv square, we can see that the mass is present, but the velocity is not. So the kinetic energy should be zero. So this is the ordered kinetic energy, which in this case is zero. But what happens if you try to, or if you start heating up this ball or this ball of metal, if you start heating it up, what would happen? If you zoom in, the atoms of the solid will start vibrating more violently upon their own fixed positions. And why is that happening? Because we know that uh, temperature is proportional to the kinetic energy of atoms, which is generally explained in the second point of the syllabus, right? So if you increase the temperature, the kinetic energy of the molecules increases. So technically speaking, we can't say that the kinetic energy is zero, but we have to be specific what type of kinetic energy are we talking about. So when you talk about the kinetic energy of atoms due to its motion, that is referred as random distribution of kinetic energy or random kinetic energy. That is specifically of the atoms inside an, inside an object. Because for example, if you still throw a, a ball towards a single side, on a whole, the object is moving with some kinetic energy in a specific direction. But what about its atoms? It atom, its atoms are still vibrating, but the ball as a whole is moving towards the right side. So we have to make a differentiation between these two ideas. So the ordered kinetic energy is when the whole object is moving and random kinetic energy would be the energy of the atoms that is distributed throughout the system. So purely in terms of energy only, this idea actually wants to single out or wants to make sure that students only think about the energy of the atoms. Right? So we understand where the kinetic energy is coming from. Now let's discuss where the potential energy is coming from. Uh, in another video, uh, I've explained what electric field or the force of elect electric field or electric force between two charged particles looks like. And to tell you a small hint or a small summary of that briefly, that was Q1, Q2 divided by 4 pi epsilon naught R square. Right? So force between two charges. Now, how does that happen, right? So, now this point, from this point onwards, this is purely going to be in terms of chemistry, but we're going to discuss it so that we understand what potential energy is. And when we are going to refer to this uh, in the next lesson or in the incoming uh, next point as the energy of bonds, we need to understand where it actually comes from. So, to understand where the energy is existing, we need to understand a bit of chemistry as well. So, there is a graph. Uh, of this potential energy with reference to the distance between the molecules, right? Uh, so this is the distance between atoms 
and most definitely this is going to be in micrometers, picometers, nanometers, because the atomic distances are very less, right? So, if two atoms have to come close, for example, one of the atoms is fixed at this point, let's say it's positively charged, with an electron cloud existing on the outer side. Now, it doesn't matter whether we are forming an ionic bond, covalent bond, or a metallic bond, this is what generally happens. So, an atom from a very far distance, again, let's say it has a positively charged nucleus and a negatively charged electron shell. Now, as you start moving close to the first atom, let's say this is atom A, this is atom B, as you start moving closer to this atom, the potential energy between the bonds starts to increase. Now, mathematically speaking, the energy is increasing in terms of the value. But if you talk about it in terms of uh, value with the sign, it's actually decreasing because it's becoming more and more negative. Right? So it's just a matter of uh, mathematical idea or mathematical concept. It doesn't matter anything more than that. Now, what happens when you push them or push these atoms close together? What happens is that uh, the electron cloud, now let's say that this atom actually comes at this point. Okay. So this is the positive charge nucleus. This is the electron. Now, what happens between these atoms as you bring them close together, the potential energy is decreasing continuously because the distance between them is decreasing. Previously, it was this much and now it is this much, right? So, the electron cloud of atom B is attracted by the nucleus of atom A and the electron cloud of atom A is attracted by a nucleus of atom B, right? So, eventually, let's say for the sake of example, they form a covalent bond, right? So Immediately after that, if you try to push them even closer, if you try to push them even closer, what eventually happens is that in a covalent bond, the electron clouds are overlapping. There comes a time if you try to push them together, the atoms will be so close that the force of repulsion between them will start overpowering the electron attraction of clouds with the nucleus. So, if you're trying to keep pushing them together, the potential energy starts rising again. Now, notice that the distance is decreasing, right? So, as compared to this point, and as compared to this point, you are decreasing the distance, okay? So, if you try to increase the distance, that means you're trying to push them together. When you try to push them together, basically what you're trying to do is now fuse the nucleuses together, fuse the nuclei together. This is what you're trying to do. So, beyond this point, the potential energy starts rising again into the positive side because now it is going to require an external effort to overcome the repulsion of the nucleuses and eventually convert them into or take them towards fusion, right? So up to this point where there is stability between the atom when the electron cloud has been shared and the, atomic, and the chem chemical bond has been formed, this is the region that we are actually talking about in terms of potential energy in physics, right? So potential energy will be inversely proportional to the distance between the atoms, right? And potential energy most definitely will depend on the number of bonds. Simple chemical bonds, right? Intermolecular bonds between the atoms that make sure that they stay solid, that make sure that they stay liquid, that make sure that they exist in a gaseous state. So when we talk about the potential energy now, we are always going to refer to the number of bonds between the atoms. And in terms of kinetic energy, we're going to assume the movement of atoms themselves, which eventually is translated by the temperature of the system, right? This lesson or this topic is basically from chemistry. If you still don't understand this, we don't have to go through the whole understanding. What we just need to understand is that potential energy will be referring to the number of bonds and kinetic energy will be referring to the temperature of the system. Right now, this is what internal energy looks like, and this is universal for all elements. Now, notice that how we talk about this for a solid, liquid, and gas. Now, for example, if we talk about the same formula in terms of solid, right? If the internal energy is equal to kinetic energy plus potential energy, if you start heating up a solid, you will notice that there will be no there will be no significant change in the distance between the atoms. So, since the potential energy is the number of bonds and it depends on the distance between the atoms, since this, uh, the shape of the solid or the volume of the solid is not changing in terms of heating, 
Of course, there is a thermal expansion, but that is insignificant in comparison to the atomic distances that have to change in order for this value to be significant enough. So eventually, we come to this conclusion that for a solid, the internal energy is purely dependent on the kinetic energy. So in turn, what it wants to say is that it is only dependent on the temperature or the heat that is supplied to the solid. There is no significant change in potential energy for a solid if it is being heated. So whatever you heat, whatever you provide the solid object as heat will be translated into its temperature and will eventually become a part of its internal energy. For example, if you heat up a stone, for example, if you heat up a, a, a pot, uh, if you're trying to make a tea, if you're trying to make tea or if you're trying to do something. So the energy of the solid cooking pan is purely because of its kinetic energy or whatever internal energy is now is purely because of its kinetic energy and that has come from the temperature. And same idea applies to liquids as well because they are not expanding, they are not contracting upon uh, heating, right? We understand that there is some, some degree of thermal expansion but on a larger scale we are going to consider this not happening for liquids because gases expand so much that their expansion compared to the liquid and solid expansion is too high it is too high so we in comparison uh, we don't talk about it in this case so again for a liquid the internal energy is purely dependent on the kinetic energy because the potential energy is not participating in this even if you provide it with some heat so at the end of the day the internal energy is purely proportional to the kinetic energy which is the temperature of the liquid molecules or the liquid system right but for gases we'll have to think about this as internal energy is equal to kinetic energy plus potential energy now we know that for gases the distance between them is very high and sometimes it does become very close upon uh, you can say uh, when they come close to each other for a collision these forces, electrostatic forces, can play a role. But if the kinetic energy of those atoms is too high, right, then the potential energy, even if it does exist, even if the electric force exists between them, will not be good enough to take over this, right? So what you have to do to for a gas to convert into a liquid and liquid back to a solid, what happens during this uh, condensation process? So basically, uh, when the gas has a very high temperature, the kinetic energy or the energy of agitation, you can say, the molecules are so agitated that when they do pass, get past one another, they don't let this electrostatic bond to be formed. Why? Because the kinetic energy or the speed is so high. Now, when you start removing the energy from the gas by cooling it down, what eventually happens is that the molecule's speed starts reducing because we know that the kinetic energy is temperature or depend is proportional to temperature. So eventually what happens is that uh, the kinetic energy starts reducing and the molecules now have enough time when they pass each other to actually form a bond. So then the potential energy starts increasing. Most definitely when we talk about the increase of potential energy, we're talking about it becoming more and more negative. Although mathematically speaking, this is decreasing, but in terms of physics, we will say that the potential energy is increasing because the number is becoming larger and larger, right? So for gases, this is how we are going to think about it. This is how we're going to refer to it in the examination, because in gases, both energies will be important, okay? Now let's move towards the contents of the syllabus. So we understand the first point what, where he says, what is the internal energy? The second point is the rise in temperature subject. We also understand that as well, okay? Okay, so we're moving towards uh, the formula of work done by a gas and work done on the gas. We're going to explore this in the next slide, right? But first, we're going to start with the first law of thermodynamics. If you notice what we have done so far about the internal energy, the first law of thermodynamics is exactly the same. This is what it, its physical manifestation, what it looks like, what the internal energy concept is, right? So I'm going to write this down again. So internal energy is equal to the sum of kinetic energy plus the sum of all potential energies of the all the atoms in the system. Now, internal energy will be represented from the first law of thermodynamics, which is this one, as delta U. Delta U means change in internal energy, right? So this is a representative of internal energy. Then we have kinetic energy. Now, kinetic energy will be represented as small q, right? And then plus with a symbol W, the potential energy will be represented. Now let's write the full form of this first part that is the work done by the gas or on the gas. Now in AS, in AS or A1, in A levels 1, we do this formula for uh, work power energy. 
that when a gas let's say compresses for example if this is a cylinder and these are the gas molecules the syringe moves outwards or the syringe moves inwards in the presence of an external pressure let's say that there is an external pressure generally this external pressure is the atmosphere around the system right so in the presence of this uh, external pressure the work done by the gas or on the gas we'll get to that uh, later because he says that we want to understand or we have to understand uh, over here that what is work done by the gas and what is work done on the gas we will simplify this but just hold on for this brief idea that the work done by the gas will be equal to p delta v this formula basically comes from force multiplied by distance <clears throat> and when you have to include the distance you'll have to include the volume of the gas that has been displaced because of this force created on the inside right so there is a derivation that involves p uh, f into d and then pressure into delta volume so basically we are just trying to find out the energy consumed or given by the gas due to this idea so this w will be replaced eventually by delta u is equal to q plus uh, p delta v now notice uh, some similarities we understand that kinetic energy basically depends upon the temperature right so q will basically be about the heating process are you heating it or are you cooling the gas that is enclosed inside the container what are you doing with it right so kinetic energy is q q is a representative of the heating now potential energy as you've done already we have talked about or we've thought about is about the bonds and the distance among those bonds this is what it's about right so if you talk about the potential energy at this point it is work done by the gas or on the gas and what is it doing what's happening so basically there is a change in volume of the gas either it is moving outwards expanding or either it is being moved inwards from the external pressure uh, and it is compressing as the gas is expanding or if the gas let's say if the gas expands or if the gas compresses in both situations the distance between the molecule changes right the distance changes and as they come close to each other the intermolecular bonds may have a chance to form again right so one way or the other this p delta v factor is actually a representative of the potential energy of the system so basically this idea of internal energy has manifested itself in this equation that we need to get familiar with how to use this equation for a gaseous system and of course by the end of the day we are going to look at an example how to use this p delta v equation and how to use these ideas to actually solve a question the question has been taken from october november 2010 a very common question to fully understand what this idea is going to be about okay so come coming back to this idea so <clears throat> we're going to write this i'm going to write this equation down so delta u is equal to small q plus w now let's write down the symbols for it so if you are heating the system that means that the values you're going to take for the system will be taken as positive if you're cooling a system down for example if you're removing energy from the system then the sign will be taken as negative now comes the next part in which the words are going to be a bit confusing but don't worry about it so if the gas is allowed to expand then the energy has taken has been taken away from the system only then the gas would have done this work to expand right so the energy will be taken as negative if the gas is compressed by the external pressure then the energy has been added into the system and the answer will be taken as positive right so this is generally referred as work done on the gas right and the upper one is generally written as work done by the gas the gas has used the internal energy to do this task or to do this job of expansion by doing work or pushing against the atmospheric pressure to eventually expand right so there are two examples uh, heating has a very common understanding but let's move towards the compression and expansion in this situation let's say this is our standard syringe right so if we observe in this circumstance this situation it has been compressed or it has undergone compression and in this situation it has been allowed to expand or another way the gas has done work 
on the system. As you can see over here, if a gas uh, work done by the gas, if the work is done being by the gas, then the answer generally is taken as negative. If it is compressed, then work has been done on the gas. So work done on the gas and the answer is taken as positive. So another way of looking at this would be how to speak about this, how to talk about this. So the external pressure, the atmospheric pressure, generally it is atmospheric pressure, has been dominating enough, has been good enough that the internal pressure of the gas was somewhat less than the external atmospheric pressure. Hence the generic or the general force was from area of high pressure towards an area of low pressure. It caused the piston to move inwards. So the work was done on the gas by the external system, which was the atmosphere. Over in this case, the pressure of gas inside the container was partially or for momentarily was greater than the atmospheric pressure that is on the outside acting on the piston. So what has happened is that the inside molecules has pushed against the atmospheric pressure, applied a force in this direction and eventually caused some work done. So how can a gas do this? It can only do this if it takes some investment away from already available energy in the system. So whatever energy is available in the system has been used by the gas to eventually expand that since it is using that energy or using that budget of energy, the answer will be a negative sign. It is taking away from the energy. It is taking from the energy sources to do this job. Whereas on the other hand, energy is being added into the system by compressing it. Because if we allow the gas to expand again, if we release the pressure, it will come back to the original situation, which means that whatever energy we added into the system by compressing the gas can be accessed or can be received back if you allow to expand it again, right? So that is how you're going to look at this equation and simply put, I have uh, given you the positive and negative signs how to look at this. If we come to this question, uh, the first part is, let's zoom in a bit. Okay, so it says the internal energy at this point is in joules, right? So simply write down the equation first of all, delta U is equal to heating. So this is actually the small Q plus work done on the gas or by the gas. This will be W, which is practically the P delta V function, which we've already done for the gas, right? Okay, now let's look at the question. For the very first and common question in these questions is, what is the change in internal energy throughout the cycle? So it starts from P and ends at P, which means that from P situation, if it goes to Q, then goes to R, and then goes back to P, what is the actual change in internal energy? And that is generally zero. Why? Because if you had compressed the gas, if you have heated the gas up, if whatever uh, job you've performed on the gas is being stored in its molecules in terms of its internal energy, either you can access it back, you can allow it to expand, or you can use that heated gas to heat another object, right? So under all these circumstances, at the end of the day, if you come to the same point from where you started off with the gas, you have uh, practically done nothing. Let's say you've added 100 joules, and then you take 100 joules back in terms of another job, another task. So the net change will be zero, right? So this is basically an accounting problem, or think about it in terms of an accountant. How much energy was given, how much money was spent, how much money was taken back. Okay, calculate the work done from P to Q. Now, from P to Q, we can understand that this is the stage P and this is stage Q. We understand that this is volume, right? And we are moving against a constant pressure because the pressure is not changing at this point. It is still 4. You can zoom in and check that this value is 4. We know that the work done by gas is represented as P delta V. So the external pressure is 4 into 10 is to power 5. Don't forget, this is a 10 to the power 5 factor with it. So the values are in uh, 10 to the power 5. And then the change in volume, which is from 8 to 2. So 8, eight sorry, what you can do quickly is, and please notice that this is 10 to the power minus 4. So this will be 8 minus 2 into 10 to the power minus 4. Your answer is going to be around 240 joules. Now, we need to understand that whether this is going to be a positive answer or a negative answer. We can't solve it. We can't look at it from this delta V point as final volume minus initial volume, right? This will give you a negative answer. But since we know that we are compressing the gas, the volume has reduced, right? If the volume has reduced, that means that this is a case of compression. And in terms of compression, we understand that the answer has to be a positive value. 
So this is how you decide based on the situation of the gas, whether this is an addition of energy or a removal of energy, right? Okay. So this will be taken as plus 240. As from P to Q, the work done on the gas or work done by the gas has been an addition of energy into the system, right? So compression causes compression causes a positive sign. That is what you have to remember. Now, using this equation that we've already written down, we're going to simply arithmetically add this together. So this is going to become from P to Q. The equation will be plus 240 plus, because there is an addition sign, minus 600 equals to the change in internal energy. Now, if you add this together, you'll find that this will be minus 360 joules. So over here, this will be minus 360 joules. Okay. A simple arithmetic solution for this one. On, and uh, what can we say about the minus 600? Most definitely this was for heating. That means that it has been cooled down while this was being done. Okay. Okay. So let's move towards uh, Q to R. Now in Q to R, he says that there is no work done on the gas. Okay. So we move from Q to R and we, as we can see that the volume has not changed. The volume is still the same. So the answer of P delta V, since delta V is equal to zero, the whole answer becomes zero. The only addition has been of the heating. So you have added, since this is plus 720, that means you have heated it up. So this plus 700 joules means that you have heated the system or you've added the system by heating. So again, you apply the simple arithmetic operation that we have for this one, W plus Q is equal to delta U. You'll have to add both of them together. So you zero plus 720 is equal to plus 720. Be advised, you have to write down the signs with it, even if uh, mathematically we don't have to mention the positive sign, but for, the, but for this situation, you have to. Now we move to the last part, R to P. This part has to be solved in another situation or a bit differently. So we start from this column because we know that uh, if the starting point and the ending point of the gas are exactly the same, that means the change in internal energy will be zero. Right, so we start for this equation. So I'm going to write down what we have to do for R to P. So R to P, we start from the third column that is of the internal energy. So across the full cycle, the total energy should be zero. So internal energy from the first stage P to Q plus internal energy from stage Q to R plus internal energy from the stage R to P. And I've mentioned all these three stages. And most definitely, this is going to be the change, right? So change in return and change in. If we add all of them together, this answer should be equal to zero because the starting point and the ending point is the same. So let's take these values. So this is minus 360. This is plus 720. This is plus delta U R P. We don't know that. And this is equals to zero. So if you find out this algebraically, you're going to take it to the other side. So you get delta U R P will be equal to minus 360 joules. Now this is coincidentally coming out as minus 360 joules, exactly the same answer as the first one. In other questions, this doesn't have to be this way. They can have different answers. And last but not the least, then we move towards this side to solve this system, right? So we have, uh, again, we are going to simply perform algebra. Uh, the change in internal energy is equal to plus 480 plus the work done on the gas. So simply using the equation for RP, that would be uh, W plus 480 is equal to minus 360. I've just picked up the values that are mentioned in the last row, right? So we want to find the W, just goes to that side. So W is equal to minus 360 minus 480. W comes out as 7, 840 joules, but with a negative sign. So this will be minus 840 joules. So what has happened simultaneously, what has happened is, let's discuss that. When it moves from R to P, from this stage to this stage, two things are happening. It is expanding because minus of the work done by the gas is expansion. Some energy is being added into the system as heat because the answer is plus 480. And still, by the end of the day, it is short. It is in deficit of 360 joules in terms of internal energy. And why this is in deficit? We're going to look at this.
So from P to R, you actually took away the energy. Let's use a different color for this. So from P to R, these are extra comments. Of course, the question is solved now. Uh, I'm going to make some extra comments about this. So from P to Q, the answer was minus 360 joules. Now, since we're dealing with internal energy, I'm writing U as its unit, not joules. So you have taken away 360 joules of the internal energy. And out of that internal energy, the two parts that were involved, one was regarding compression and what was regarding cooling so there is a still minus 360 deficit of internal energy but when you move from q to r you added 720 joules of internal energy again now the system is in extra or is in surplus of 360 joules so if this was the u zero internal energy at this point this will be minus 360 internal energy at this point, it will be plus 360 internal energy because you have added 720 into it. And when it goes back to R, this process would have done minus 360 internal energy to bring it back to zero, right? Because there is a positive surplus. You remove that surplus, you come back to zero. So that is what's happening throughout the cycle. And of course, you can comment about the respective stages, what's happening with the gas and what's happening to heating and cooling effects, right? That is all for today. This is how you solve the question. And this is what first law of thermodynamics uh, looks like. And this is how it's going to be used in A-levels.